All right, hello, my big fifth grade Washington Eagles. Today is Friday, April, oh gosh, I don't even know. It's Friday, April, did I write, do I have the date down? Oh, April 17th, yay, it's Friday, April 17th. Um, we're gonna be reading our story. I want you to think about our spelling words as we go through our story. Um, so let's get to it. So acid, the alien has acid for blood. Center, the center of the cookie was soft. Germ, a single germ can make you sick. Pencil, I need to sharpen my pencil. City, we built this city on rock and roll. Gentle, the big dog is a gentle giant. Region, the hummingbirds return to this region every year. Orange, I love a sweet orange. Cellar. The servants let us down in the cellar. Mm. Gym. I played basketball in the gym. Distance. Um, I bicycled the short distance home. Danger. His life was in danger. Advanced. She took an advanced math class. Estimated, the estimated cost of the car was over a budget. Taming, he had a hard time taming the tiger. Achievement, he did a great job on his achievement test. And courage, it takes a lot of courage to do something new. So, I definitely think we have a lot of courage right now. So, um, again, none of this is meant to stress you out because what comes first is just feeling safe. And we're just listening to a story um, called The Edge of the World. Um, last Friday, I used my phone as kind of like a document camera, and I'm not sure how I felt about it. Um, so I'm trying to read it, to read the story like this to see if I like it any better. Um, so we'll give it a shot and. If I like it, and we'll do it again next week. If not, then I won't. So here we go. This is called The Edge of the World by Jeremy Blewett. And this is called Racing for the North Pole. Robert Perry was an explorer with a dream. He wanted to stand on the North Pole. Many people said Perry's dream was foolish. The North Pole was too cold for humans, and the winters were too dark. How would he get there? Many thought ships could not cut through the thick winter ice. When Perry decided to reach the North Pole, he spent years making his plan. He had to study how to sail the sea. He had to learn how to store food for a long time. He also learned to use sled dogs. He knew this would be a long and hard trip. He estimated that it would take years. He also needed another explorer to help him. Perry called on Matthew Hansen for assistance. Robert Perry with his dogs aboard his ship, the Roosevelt, during his race to the pole. Perry and Henson designed and built a special ship with their funds. They knew they would have to sail during the summer. Then the ice would be easier to split. They could plow through the Arctic ice and make the trip faster. They would be able to bear the coldest weather. Then they could spend the winter in the Arctic water. Robert Perry's ship, the Roosevelt, two miles below Cape Sheridan in the Arctic, 1908. Perry and Henson understood that going to the North Pole was too hard for just two men. They took with them a large number of helpers. These helpers came from local villages in Greenland. They brought their best sled dogs with them. 
During the winter, they would make sleds. They would make fur clothing and mittens and train the sled dogs. Perry's team used sled dogs to reach the North Pole. Depending on the distance of the trip, two to 15 dogs might pull one sled. Danger on the ice. Perry had planned his trip to the North Pole carefully. His team sailed for days, taming the waves, the ice, and the tides. They finally arrived at a stopping place to set up a base camp. From the base camp, Perry, Henson, and the helpers traveled in stages. They stopped to rest along the way. This kept the men and sled dogs in top shape. Perry used based camps, base camps like this one, to rest along the way. I don't know how I did that. Let's see, here we go. When they reached the last stopping place, Perry and Henson decided to go on with a smaller team. They only took four helpers with them <coughs> and set out to the North Pole. They took light sleds and the best dogs. Luckily, the weather was good and they could travel fast. Soon they reached the North Pole. Arctic ice near the North Pole. As soon as they arrived, the explorers raced back to the ship. They ran like racehorses rushing to the finish line. Although the weather was still nice, they feared being caught in a storm. They were 400 miles out in the water and in danger of losing their lives. Luckily, the weather stayed clear. Perry, Hansen, and their helpers arrived safely back at the base camp. An igloo on sea ice near the Arctic. A few weeks later, Peary and Henson came home and became famous explorers. At the time, some doubted their achievement. It seemed like an impossible task. But today's advanced tools prove that these brave men did reach the North Pole. Perry and his team were welcomed home by crowds of people. Perry and Henson traveled through ice and wind to get to the North Pole. They were the first to place an American flag there. It took a lot of planning and courage. Some people still think of Perry and Henson as the bravest American explorers of all time. Robert Perry timeline. So in 1850 is the beginning. In 1856, Robert Edwin Perry is born. May 6th in Pennsylvania. In 1881, Perry joins the Navy as a civil engineer. In 1887, Perry meets Matthew Henson. In 1909, Perry and Henson reach the North Pole. In 1920, Perry dies. And then this ends at 1950. So, um, let's see. So something that I want you to think about, I'm reading these questions, which, you know, sometimes I think they're pretty interesting. So how might the planning and experiences of an explorer in the rainforest differ from Peary's planning and, ex and experiences? So that might be something that I want you to think about. Um, if you want to send me a few sentences thinking about what would be different between the Arctic and the rainforest, I think there would be a huge difference. I think you should take a mosquito net start off with and um and so just that's something to think about it is friday 
go outside and enjoy the weather and go play a game. Go have some fun. All right. Until next time. Love you guys. Bye.